Welcome to the Bucket List Buster Travel Show. Your Bucket List Buster Travel Show helps you make your bucket list dreams come true. Host Karen Duncan spent decades running the travel business. She, along with other industry experts, share their knowledge, travel stories, and wisdom about how to travel, where to travel, and how to have a stress-free adventure. Tune in. Give yourself permission to focus on yourself. Create lifelong memories with families and friends. And finally learn to relax, rejuvenate, and reconnect. And here's the host of your show, Karen Duncan. Aloha, buenos dias, ni hao, yahate, bula, guten tag, bonjour, jumbo, board tarde, everything's iry, and good afternoon. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Hello, hello, hello. Karen Duncan here, your bucket list buster, live from Panama during all of this craziness. I know it's been a while since I've been on the air. I hadn't been podcasting because I've been living my bucket list, been living my dreams and having a great time. And then, bam, all this bull has drop dead in our laps here around the world, not just in our own particular little countries, in our little communities, but all over the world. So Your Bucket List Buster is a podcast originally about travel, and it's still about travel, but right now nobody's traveling. Everything has been shut down. The airlines are cutting back, some airlines by 90%. Uh, Cruise lines are grounded Hotels are closed. There's all kinds of stuff coming down um, in all destinations. Everybody has taken precautions. But in the midst of all of that, there is going to be life after coronavirus. And some of you are sitting at home in remote areas of the world where there's not a whole lot to do, not a lot to see. I'm so blessed to be here in Panama. I get to sit here and look at the ocean and feel feel happy about where I am in the midst of all this craziness, but not everyone is that fortunate. So I got to thinking, you know, I love to give to people. I want to make a difference in people's lives. I want it to be, I want you to find your passions. I want you to find what makes you happy. And I thought, well, I have a platform. Why not use it? Let's talk about What we're going through, I'm going to give you some information about travel and the restrictions and what all the different countries and cruise lines and everybody are doing. But I'm also wanting to talk to you about this as an opportunity. I have always said there's blessings in adversity. This is an adversity. But there are blessings out there waiting on you during this time. How do you find what those blessings are? You don't believe me, do you? Trust me. I've been through some things in my life that if I were of weaker constitution, I probably would have turned it in, gave it away, and just called it quits. But that's not what I'm made of. Um, And so I have found ways in every situation, especially now that I'm older and I understand a little bit more, That if you just make it through the day, wake up tomorrow. Tomorrow is another opportunity for something better to happen in your life. So you can't just give up every time it gets hard. You can't give up even though it's been hard for the last 10 years. Because year 10, year 3 days into the 11th year could be the day that your life turns around and you become bigger and better than you ever thought you would be. So you can never give up. So we're not going to give up. We're going to talk about travel. We're going to talk about the, the virus and how it's affecting travel and people around the world. And I'm trying to decide, guys. I'm really trying to decide. And you can help me with this. 
is whether I should go live so that you can chat with me while I'm on the air and we can talk about highlights of the places that you live. Nothing negative. I'm not doing any negativity on this show. This You want negative? Go to the big networks, the media, and listen to what they have to say about what's going on. This is my platform to find out where people are around the world and find out some great things about where they live, what they're doing while they're quarantined or while they're sitting at home. We're not quarantined, but I'm going to use that word because basically no restaurants, no bars, no socializing with more than 10 people in the United States. I mean, we're, we're pretty much quarantined in our own homes only to go out to get necessities and work in those 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 magnificent first responders and folks that are on the front lines that have to work. We applaud you, we love you, and thank you so much. But the rest of us are supposed to be sitting at home finding a way to make it happen from our own um, bedrooms, kitchens, living rooms, wherever the hell you are. Um, but I want us to find ways to connect as a community, and the community is the world. So people from all over, I want you to contact me. If you're in Alaska, if you're in Ireland, if you're in Africa, if you're in Australia, we'll find a way to make it happen um, so that we can connect and talk about some good things about uh, of where we are and where we're living. So that's what we're going to talk about today, Um, finding yourself during these restrictions. I posted a question yesterday on my Facebook page, Karen Duncan, by the way. I don't know if I said that. I'm Karen Duncan, your host. And um, the question was, I made a, what I called a quarantini. It was a martini. Actually, it was vodka over ice with a little lime, freshly squeezed lime. My husband wonderfully put it in a martini glass and we named it the Quarantini because we didn't have anything else to do. (laughs) That's us being creative and making something fun out of a not so fun situation. But anyway, so my question that I posted on Facebook is, I showed a picture of my Quarantini and I said, what are you doing that's fun and inspiring and helping you to develop and learn more about yourself while you're having this downtime. And people came back and gave me some answers. It's really kind of cool when people respond like that. You know, there are people that are hiking in Arizona. There are people that are doing crafts. There are people that are watching old movies, connecting with family members over the phone, checking on people in their neighborhoods and around their community, Um, So there's lots of things that people are doing. So I'm really interested, but I want you to go to Your Bucket List Buster Facebook page, Your Bucket List Buster Facebook page, or Instagram, and tell me what you're doing that's positive, fun, inspirational, or is helping you learn more about yourself and your family members. I don't want any judgments about what other people post, and I don't want you uh, to post anything negative. So with that, we are going to get into the show, and we're going to talk about all these fun things. So this is Karen Duncan, your Bucket List Buster. I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, we're going to talk about we don't have any specials, (laughs) but we'll talk about not having any specials and what's going on in, in the travel industry with travel news. I'll see you in a minute. You're listening to your Bucket List Buster with Karen Duncan. Hello, hello, hello. I know we've got some trying times going on right now. But one thing I also know is that we have to do things for ourselves to brighten our spirits and enlighten our souls. And one of the ways to do that is through wonderful smells and fragrances. So I want to make sure that we also support small businesses that are out there that are doing amazing things during this trying time. So if you can find a little bit in your heart and you want to do a little bit for somebody special, 
head over to Osme, which is the destination, destination perfumery for all fragrance lovers in South Florida. Our vision is not to just sell perfumes, but to promote new thinking and creative followers of niche perfumeries. So if you have nothing to do, it's a wonderful store. You can do social distancing. You can learn a lot about perfumes and fragrances from my friend Maurice Locke, who's the owner. The store is located at 50 Northwest 24th Street, Suite 111, Miami, Florida. And Maurice will walk you through an individual a seminar, basically, on perfumes. I've got my wonderful new Liquid Love uh, that I've gotten, I got for Valentine's Day from Maurice. And I would like to encourage you to stop by and see him or go to the Facebook page or the YouTube or the Instagram page. It's O-S-M-E Perfumery. And actually, Maurice, I think you should do an online class about perfumes while everybody is stuck at home. This is Karen Duck your Bucket List Buster, loving some Osme perfumes. Welcome back to your Bucket List Buster. So let's go on and get this elephant out of the room so we can talk about some fun stuff, right? This is your one and only travel show owned by a travel agent who's stepping out there and wanting to still get you to visualize your bucket list dreams of going some amazing places in the world. But in the meantime, I'm going to be the professional that helps you decipher between all the stuff that's going on out there that you need to know about. What's happening with your cruises? What's happening with the airlines? What's happening with hotels? What kind of tips can I give you about getting uh, your travel situation back in order? So I've got some friends um, around the world that left on some amazing bucket list trips a little while back. One couple did a big cruise on one of Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas, I think it is, one of the biggest ships out there, did a Mediterranean cruise. They were going to do some tours over in Spain and then hop on a river cruise and do some river cruising, all of that, you know, in one big old wonderful trip. And guess what? We've got a virus that now has hit um, that area of the world specifically quite hard. And um, they're kind of stuck because everything has been canceled. And so if you find yourself, if you're listening and you find yourself stuck in a country that is uh, quarantined or pretty much shut down, First and foremost, I say contact your embassy. If you're not a part of the SMART program, the United States has a, um, a program where you register with the embassy and they keep you abreast of what's going on either by um, email or by text. And so they can help you decipher what can be done and what cannot be done based on what's going on right now around the world. But in this particular case, the, the hotel is closing down to all incoming guests, so they get to stay there for a while. But the restaurant is closing down, so finding um, grocery stores that are open so that they can get food like sandwiches and that type of thing. And, or, in some cases, you can order food and have it brought in or go pick it up. That's what's happening here in Panama. The restaurants are closed, but they can sell takeout so you can go and pick up your food if you need to. But first of all and foremost, I would say register with your embassies if you have to travel from now on. This is a good lesson for all of us is to get registered with the SMART program anytime you're going to be traveling so that they can make you aware. Second of all, um, In this particular case, travel insurance may or may not have helped you because this is something a little different, Um, but it helps to have some insurance to cover some aspects of it. Perhaps 
it would help you offset the cost of your hotel rooms if you're having to spend money on hotel rooms because of extended period of times. One of the things the cruise lines learned during the incident with the Princess Cruise that was off of Yokohama, Japan, was people need to have um, international calling plans or at least data plans so that you can connect with people across the world. Take additional medication with you. Take more medication than the number of days that you're going to be traveling because anything could happen and you may need to... Um, Get, uh, have additional. Sec third all, if you can get a copy of your prescription, if you have a copy of your prescription, so that if you do get stuck in a country temporarily, you have something that shows that you're supposed to have that medication and maybe they can give you some, uh, sell you some dosage <coughs> while you're gone. Excuse me. <coughs> I guess that meant I needed more <clears throat> mimosa. My throat got dry. Anyway, that is not what you're supposed to be doing at this time of morning. But when you're on lockdown, you get creative. Anyway, to continue on about a more serious topic. So you want to make sure you have enough medication. And um, you want to make sure that you have cash emergency cash in the event that places or machines go down. Um, places don't take credit cards or machines go down. You want to have some cash stashed um, so that you can convert it or be able to use it. So those are some, some tips right now for this week on traveling from now on because life as we know it um, may change. It may not ever look the same. And that's not a bad thing, guys. It's not a bad thing when when life changes. I promise you, it may seem like it is initially, but sometimes it's just the world um, resetting itself so that we get back to basics or learn to do some things that we would not have ordinarily have learned. Okay, so next, what's going on? The passengers that were drift at sea on the Grand Princess that I was just talking about that were are quarantined um, are talking about their experience. If you go online, you can hear some of them talk about the experience that they had. And for the most part, it was not a bad experience. This one particular lady that was interviewed said that uh, 21 people aboard, 19 crew and two guests tested positive for the coronavirus while they were on there. So this particular passenger disembarked in, at California's Travis Air Force Base under mandatory 14-day quarantine along with hundreds of other passengers. And in the interview, she talked about uh, the frustrations, um, how some people became depressed, and their you know, just being stuck on that ship for the number of days that they were stuck. So she started a Facebook page so that she could talk to other guests that had gone through this experience with her and just kind of, sometimes you just need to vent and being able to have people to talk to helps people that are struggling, um, whether it's anxiety or depression or just because you're bored. Sometimes just being able to talk about it is it makes a big difference. But anyway, she talked about how it really wasn't that bad of an experience um, and how she plans to cruise again. She says no one needs to stop cruising because the standards will be so high and transparent. Passengers will feel very confident. And the, the crew had done everything they could to keep them occupied and entertained. Um, they had games and puzzles and all kinds, you know, the, the entertainment staff on these ships are phenomenal anyway. And I can imagine that they just took over and just did what they could to make these people feel good. She did say that having a balcony made a big difference because um, she said the two while away time on the balcony drive, drinking wine and swiping information with other passengers, eventually making friends with many of, many of them. 
Um, it does make a difference if you're on a ship for a long period of time, whether you have a balcony or not, or have access to the outside. I feel for these crew members uh, that work in the bowels of these ships, I, I'm always mixed about the cruising industry because I like sustainability. I want everyone treated fairly. And I just know that we as passengers do not appreciate the work and the effort that these young people and old people that are working on these ships from some of these third world countries um, these are some fantastic jobs for them. They're making more money than they would ever make, but they're away from their family for extended period of times, and they put up with a lot of crap from you, public, who decide that they are not worthy to be respected. That's a whole nother show. But these people are doing the best that they can. They are um, doing with what resources they have. So when we deal with these people, when we work or are being served by these people that are working their hardest, respect them, treat them right. But can you imagine them sleeping four to a cabin away from their families at this time, worried about what's going on at home with their children, their wives, their parents, their husbands, and um, so it, you know, we've got we got to put things in perspective. I know I went off on a whole different tangent. I, I may do that during this show because I get to. Anyway, Canada implements cruise restrictions. So if you're doing any of the Alaskan cruises that are coming up, and you have to go through Vancouver or anywhere as the British Columbia, uh, Victoria, um, note that until July. July 1st, that is not an option. So you'll want to check with your cruise line to see what they're going to do about that particular cruise, if they're doing something different, if they're adding another port, or are they canceling all the way around. Just so you know, cruise lines have to, if they originate in the United States, they have to go to a foreign port it's part of the maritime law, the, an agreement with the United States. They have to go to a foreign port. So the, uh, uh, Canada is a big deal for people that are leaving out of Seattle or um, Anchorage, Alaska. They have to go to a foreign port. So Canada is a big deal for from that perspective. Then there's CLIA. The Cruise Line International Association agrees to temporary halt cruising from U.S. ports for 30 days. So it's voluntary, um, and they're suspending operations for the U.S. for 30 days starting March the 14th. All of Europe, um, anyway, that's another story. But yes, so just know that for the next 30 days, all cruises are being suspended that originate out of the United States um, and most within other countries as well. So you will want to make contact with your travel agent or your cruise line to see what is going to happen. So my recommendation to my folks that I have headed for cruises is wait until the cruise line pulls the plug. They're offering the incentives right now um, to get you to book a future cruise and to not 100% cancel. If you do want to cancel, you get all of your money back. But folks, we're going to still be traveling and the cruise line industry is the cruise industry is going to be fine. So um, I recommend that you don't say you want to cancel. If your cruise is not between now and April 11th or 12th, just wait. Wait until your travel agent contacts you. Wait until the cruise line contacts you and then make a decision at that particular point. You're not going to lose anything. Um, if you wait. All of Europe for U.S. now has restrictions. So if you're in Europe, unless you're American citizen or naturalized citizen of the United States, you will not be traveling to the U.S. And for the most part, the same thing is happening everywhere else in the world. Europe can't get into um, Panama right now. Uh, Asia can't get into, a, if you've been to Asia, I know here that we were going to have a program, uh, 
I sing a little bit with a guitar player, acoustic player. Wonderful. Yes, we are called the Acoustic Duho, D-U-H-O. But anyway, um, one of the uh, things that we found out when we were getting ready, we had something on the schedule for April the 1st was that the the hotel resort condos were going to make people register their passports and depending on where you had been in the last 30 days you may or may not have been able uh, to come to the event but of course we've had to cancel because you can't have any more than 50 or 10 people depending on where you're coming from um, at an event no live music or anything at this particular point Airlines are rebooking for you up to a year. If you bought airline tickets and you have not been able to use them, there are two things. One, if your airline canceled your flight, they will accommodate you in one way. If you canceled your flight because where you were going, you can no longer go, or the event you were going for is no longer is, has been canceled, that's a different story. And we had a situation here where we had the music festival. We're going to have the jazz and blues festival starting this coming weekend. And it was canceled. So I had to cancel air for a customer coming in. They are The airlines are giving you up to a year to use that airfare. You will not get a refund, but you'll still get to use your ticket. Now, I would assume, because there are going to be people out there that say, what if we, in a year, we still can't travel? They will accommodate you. They will do something, I'm sure. But let me tell you this, folks. If we're looking at people not flying in a year, the economy all over the world will have crashed. The world as we know it will not be the same. So we don't want that to happen. So let's not ask those questions, but I'm answering it because I know I'll get it. Anyway, so just know you can rebook your um, airfare up to a year. Japan says they still are going to hold the Olympics. And so here's, here's the deal. And people are going, oh, my God, oh, my God, don't freak out. But here's the deal. The, the Olympics are not until July. And we have to be optimistic and think about, okay, by July, all this shit's going to be gone. It's going to be done. We'll be able to move on. People will be able to move around like they used to. Maybe not quite like you used to, but you'll be able to move around. So we don't want to pull the plug on all of these things that are months in advance. Because once again, folks, if we start shutting down 100% of future events and opportunities then the world as we know it will shut down and will be in it anyway you know what i mean so we have to be optimistic and look forward and say okay by july all this will be over we'll all be able to travel i'll get to go on my alaska cruise in june life will be wonderful and then the next big thing that I have to talk about is, you know, the theme parks are closed. So, you know, when Disney shuts down and when um, Broadway goes dark, it's a big ass deal, right? It is a big deal. It's a big deal. And I didn't want to believe that it was, but it is. And I'm over it. And that's all I'm going to talk about because when I come back from break, at least that's what I'm talking about this week, I'll up. Uh, and I may be doing this daily. I haven't decided yet on how often you guys uh, want to receive this travel information. Uh, so let me know. I, I really need to know. So go to your Y-O-U-R Bucket List Buster Facebook, Instagram. Email me at yourbucketlistbuster uh, at gmail.com. And let's have a conversation on how often you would like for me to give you travel updates on the podcast. And I will do that. And I'll have inspirational things also to get you out of your funk. But And that's where we're going to go right now. The funk is over. We're going to have good stuff to talk about right now. We're going to discover ourselves during this process. We're going to have a great time. And we're going to love on each other. This is Karen Duckett, your Duncan, not Duckett. Karen Duncan, your bucket list buster. And I'll be back. You and me.
If you like the sound of vacationing at a five-star luxury included resort, Sandals has a symphony of romantic indulgences just for you. Sandals hits all the right notes for two people in love. Miles of pristine beaches harmonize with beautiful turquoise seas. Love Nest Suites are orchestrated with private plunge pools and tranquility soaking tubs for two. The tempo increases with unlimited land and water sports, including scuba diving and golf. Your taste buds are treated to a rhapsody of five-star global gourmet dining at up to 16 world-class restaurants, including endless pours of premium spirits and wine, music to anyone's ears. From live entertainment to taxes, tips, and transfers, it's all included, all unlimited, and only at Sandals, the world's only five-star luxury included resorts, voted world's best 21 years in a row. Contact Peaks Cruises and Tours at 512-529-3696. Welcome back to your Bucket List Buster. Karen Duncan here, your host. So, you know, I was living my dreams big time, big, big, big time. I'm here living by the beach in Panama. I'm singing on weekends. I'm hosting the Beach Business Networking Group. Just having a good-ass time, right? And then here we go with what we have is another world drama Um my travel agency, Peaks Cruising and Tourists, has been around for 25 years. We celebrated 25 years on the 6th. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And um, we've been through this before. We went through it with SARS, the bird flu, 9-11, and the war starting. So we've been a down and out before. Not out, but just down. So I know what it feels like, folks. Um when you feel like everything is being pulled out from under you. I have a son that works on cruise ships. I have a daughter that's a flight attendant. And we've got a son that's over in Asia living his best life. <clears throat> he decided to do some traveling and see the world. And he's over in Asia now. Um, so, you know, it's a little scary on a personal level for us. So let's talk about what we do during this time to, to lift our spirits. First of all, you got to stop watching the news. If you're a news addict, you got to stop. And even if you're, you know, looking at stuff on Facebook, because half the time you don't know if it's true on Facebook, even the news sometimes, if you listen to certain people on the news, you don't know if they're lying to you or telling the truth. Do real research is the first thing I'm going to say. Do your own real research, and I'm not talking about entertainment research. I'm talking about the facts. And then figure out, sit down, and reflect and think about, okay, if the world changes, or even if it comes back the way that it was, am I doing or am I the person that I've always wanted to be? What would I be doing differently? If, this, if, if my life as I knew it was changing right now and I had to make new decisions about what I was going to do, where I was going to go, what you know, who I was going to love. Are you living your true self? Are you? Have you discovered what your passions are in life? And if you haven't, then if you're working on Wall Street and you make a billion dollars and right now everything is in the tank, but you only did that because you knew you could make a lot of money or your parents told you that you should, that's what you should do. What, what else would you be doing? Do you want to be painting in Tuscany and that was your real dream but your, your folks told you you couldn't do it? Or somebody d- didn't encourage you to become a professional um, row person or a professional anything that you wanted to be, singer, whatever. You want to be a writer. What is it that your life is passionate about? I was talking to a young lady yesterday who's been struggling. We all have our struggles. A lot of it is due to shit that went on when we were uh, children and, and us getting the type of encouragement or, not, or um, being mistreated by people that we were supposed to be able to trust and love. We all have drama. Well, not all of us, but a lot of us have drama. Um, And with that drama, we set our real selves aside and 
we don't really give the universe and God the opportunity to talk to us and direct us in the direction we're supposed to be going. We're all here for a reason, I promise you. And things like this happen for a reason. And it's for us to be able to sit back, get to basics, start loving on our families and neighbors again, coming together as communities and living a more simple life, I assume, I think, and I, that's my opinion, not anybody else's. And guess what, folks? It's my show. So I get to tell you what my opinion is, and you can agree with it or not. If you don't agree with it, I I want you to listen, but this is about knowing that there is there is a bigger thing out there other than us and we have to fit into this universe the way we were intended to be here. We can't all be the same thing. We can't all be Beyonce. You know, I'm not a Beyonce. I sing, but I'm not even close to being a Beyonce. I sing the way Karen sings, and I get better every week because I've been singing, and I now am doing what I love. But just, you know, that's about me. But find yourself during these restrictions. Reestablish your relationships. If you're stuck in, in the house with a person that you a week ago thought you were going to divorce because you guys can't get along, think about why you got together in the first place. What did you do when you didn't have very much money, you were just kind of hanging out there, doing your own thing, just being silly, you know? My husband woke up this morning, and he turned on music videos from from R&B hits of the 70s, 60s and 70s and 80s when he lived in Detroit and music was good and the temptations were kicking it. That was first thing this morning as we were trying to gather ourselves to go to the grocery store so we wouldn't have to stand in line because they're only letting 50 people in at a time. Then we came home and we made, I made myself a mimosa, as you heard. You know, I, I can't do that every day. But some of the things that I am doing is we go for long walks. We're fortunate enough to be living in a community that there's open spaces for us to go for a walk. So yesterday we did three miles. We didn't today because we got up early to go to the grocery store so we wouldn't have to stand in line. Mm. But yesterday, you know what else I did? I got back into yoga. I got to thinking because they closed my gym here at the condo, which I was using pretty regularly, is I've still got to find a way to get my workouts in and maintain my strength and to feel good and get those endorphins flowing. There's lots of stuff on YouTube. YouTube has become our friend, and I never thought we'd be into YouTube, but my husband watches it because he's discovered cooking all of a sudden. Fabulous, let me just tell you. But exercise um, programs are on YouTube. I'm doing um, Downward Dog as the yoga app that I use, and I started slow yesterday and just did 20 minutes of some real easy stuff to get myself back in it. But if I'm going to be grounded for 30 days, you know how amazing I'll look in 30 days if I can do yoga every day? Or if you can get out there and walk every day or find some other exercise program that you can use while you're sitting in the house. We got to get up, folks. We Create that body. You've been saying you didn't have the time. Well, for you guys that can't go to work, get your asses off the couch and find something for some type of exercise that you can do. And um, I have Fitbit, and with it, it tells me every hour I need to get up and walk 250 steps. I think I'm going to start that exactly right now so that I don't turn into a couch potato. The other thing is we've got to stay positive. Don't talk to every friend that's going to agree with you, that's going to let you sit up there and have your woe is me moment, and all they want to talk about is the virus. We don't need that. That's what has caused this situation in the first place. The more negativity we put out into the universe, the more we get back. So part of my show is to give you more positive, and the more you think positive, the more other people will think positive, and they'll think positive, and they'll think positive, and before you know it, we'll be a positive society, and this shit will be over. That's what I have to say. 
Spend time with your family and friends. What fun new inspirational thing are you doing during your time off? What are you doing? Get a notebook if you can. Go to the store, put your mask on and your gloves. Go to the store, get a notebook if you don't already have one. Find new hobbies and activities. Get back to basics. My husband has been dying for me to listen to audiobooks with him. He has discovered audiobooks and he's obsessed. It's kind of like podcasts. But guess what this is, guys? This is radio. This is old school radio. Like we used to listen when we before everybody had TVs in every room. Everybody gathered around the radio and they were entertained. Um, now, I don't have multiple voices and multiple sounds, and I'm not creating a play, but guess what? We can start getting back to that. That's how we use our brain so that maybe we don't have Alzheimer's when we get to a certain point because all we see is visual stuff. And please don't call me about that because I don't know the science behind Alzheimer's. I just know that we need to keep our brains active and uh, flexible and we need to challenge ourselves. This is the time for us to, to learn a new language. This is if we're listening to audiobooks and listening to podcasts, it, we can close our eyes and we can let our brains absorb one thing at a time. And that's what I'm not good at. So I started listening to an audiobook with him today, and I told him, because he's a big sci-fi guy. I said, Look, you gotta start me slow. First of all, it's a total different um, muscle that I'm using by not what I think I'm doing, multitasking, watching TV, looking at my phone, coming up with new ideas to be successful and get all the abundance that I deserve. Um, but so you're just listening to someone talk to you and creating a, a scenario. I used to read a lot, but this is even different than reading because I still have books that I read. But this is different just listening to somebody talk. But he didn't pick the right one for me to start at. I can only I could only do like 15 minutes today because it's something I've got to work myself up to. He had to work himself up to it as well. But he's got to go back, find a, a book that has a little more, has some more elements in it that I might embrace so that I can start listening. And if you're an author and you need... Um, your audio books, you need your books, turn into audio books. My daughter is out there, Miss Portia. Contact me. I'll give you her information. She's, uh, uh, she, you can request her on Amazon and she's just getting started, but I'm trying to support creativity and a way for people. That's her passion. She loves to read. She loves books. She loves authors. And and she, I always used to tell her she had a one nine hundred voice. She's got this little husky thing going on. So you know, depending on what your book is about, she could be really good for you. But anyway, contact me at uh, uh, yourbucketlistbuster at gmail dot com, and I'll give you her information. But anyway, so podcast, radio books, eating healthy. Don't go out and buy a bunch of chips. You can have some chips, but not all chips. But, you know, buy frozen vegetables so that if you can't go out on often, your fresh vegetables and fruits don't go bad. Frozen is good. Um, use canned items if, if you have to, but, but look at smart canned items. No salt, not in creams and oils and that kind of stuff. Um, make sure that you're eating good nutrients, balanced meals. And quantity matters. Quantities matter a lot. Look at YouTube. Do some walking exercises right there on your TV. Everybody's got TV. Don't tell me you don't. For those, I do know two people that don't. My brother-in-law is one of them. Um, and But now may be a time so that you can start seeing some of the positive things that there are on TV for you to look at. And um, we talked about finding positive people. I don't have time, folks, for negativity right now. There's a lot of it going on out there. And even one of the books that my husband wanted me to listen to, he's like, oh, it's so like what's going on right now. I don't need to hear that shit. This is real life. So I don't need to hear that. Um, look at travel videos. And dream about life after coronavirus. So that's, of course, what we're doing. We've got a cruise coming up to Alaska with a group of people in June. 
So my husband printed the itinerary and we've been looking at things to do in each one of the stops that we get to. Then my 60th birthday is coming up in October and I have big plans about where I would like to be in the world during that time. South Pacific, if you want to go, let's talk about it. Let's plan for after the virus. And so I'm starting to look at things to do in some of those stops. There are other places in this world that I've dreamed of going that I haven't been yet. I want to look at what it looked like before, what it's going to look like after, and where can I still go? Part of what I want and I dream about all the time is being able to travel the world with my family, to see these places as a family and enjoy each other's company, um, exploring. That's one of the things that I want to do. Uh, Send some positive vibes into the universe. I just talked about that. Please, folks, the more you think about negativity and dying, the more you, you are putting that out into the universe and creating that negativity. I'm doing, one of the things that I'm also doing is a 21-day meditation challenge through uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra, uh, Chopra Center. And it was brought to me by a friend who then challenged me. I'm doing it with her, and now I've created a group. If you would like to be a part of a group, I can arrange that, but you're going to have to email me. And I'll start another group. It, it has been very, very, very helpful. I think this is the perfect time to learn about um, how law of attraction um, creates what goes on in this world, especially in your own little world. So um, let's talk about that. So I'm going to take another quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about a little bit more about the bucket list and how this life may change. This is Karen Duncan, your bucket list buster. I'll be back in a minute. Why stay local when you can go global? It's going to be free right about now. With Norwegian Cruise Line, you can shift out of traffic and into vacation mode. Before you know it, you'll be free at sea. What is free at sea? It's your choice of up to five free offers, like free unlimited open bar, free shore excursions, and more. So sail to the Caribbean, Alaska, or Hawaii, and vacay your way, only on Norwegian. To book your Norwegian cruise, contact Peaks Cruises and Tours at 512-529-3696 today. Hey, Karen Duncan here, your bucket list buster, back talking about all the crazy madness going on. Ooh. Anyway, so we were talking about before the break, and yes, I'm running commercials for products and people that um, I feel very strongly about, and I believe in doing that. Some people say, oh, how could you run a cruise line commercial right now with all that's going on with the cruise lines? Well, guess what? I imagine they will be back. And when they come back, you're going to want to be a part of what's going on. And they are still offering some great deals. Norwegian is offering all of that and more right now for you to book in the future. But anyway, um, so we're talking about things that are positive and happy things. And we've, you know, we've gone through what's going on with some of the travel vendors out there. And I will keep you abreast, I promise, of new things that are going on um, as they come up. And that may be daily. I'm not sure. But I may just do a few minutes every day from now on. Anyway, so what's next on your bucket list? Has it changed? Are you assessing your life before and after the coronavirus? So I still have plans, like I said. Um, My bucket list may accelerate because of this, because you just never know what's going to go on. Um, Some places I may not go to, but I may not have planned to go to those places anyway. I don't know. Um, I just know that To me, it's more important. The one thing that's really vitally important for me is to make sure that my children are close, to make sure my children are healthy and happy, and that I can get to them if I need to, 
and that I, from here out, that I spend the quality time and time with them that I can so that we can have some fantastic experiences. You know, we all screw up as parents. We really do. And we don't always get it right. Um, But when you recognize that, it's never too late for you to take stock and say, I'm sorry, and from here I want us to spend this kind of time together or whatever it is that you want to do. But that's that's on my bucket list. That is what I'm focused on in meditation right now to be able to have the means, the financial means to gather my young'uns around me and we just go do the world together. That's what I want to do. Oh, I just, that makes me happy. So I've talked about what's going on in the rest of the world. If you're in Europe, you're in quarantine. If you're Australia, you're not, or New Zealand, you're not accepting certain people. Some people, uh, the Asian is not accepting cruise line customers as well as Canada. So before you leave for your vital trip that you have to make, and the only traveling that really should be going on right now is if you're trying to get home to your babies. Like I was saying, being close to your babies, if that's where you're trying to get to, then by all means, you get to those babies. But for the rest of us, you know, I talk to my babies every day. They're three hours away from me at this particular point. Um, If I had to to hire a helicopter to get there, I could. Um, So I feel confident. And they're they're pretty much self-sufficient. But for the rest of us, we should sit still for a little bit. If everybody would sit still for a minimum of 14 days and not be exposed to anything new or anybody new um, that we know don't have the virus, then we could stop this thing. And we need to do our parts. For the elderly, if, if, if you know that you're not feeling good, don't go around grandma. Keep your asses at home, folks. And as much as I didn't want to do that, I fought it for a long time. I did. Um, But it's serious, and we need to stop it so that the world can get back on, on, on the air and get going again. We need people to keep going. So the cruise lines are down. Airlines are cutting up to 90% of uh, their flights. And certain destinations are not allowing us in. But for the rest of us, this is an opportunity to learn about yourself, to find yourself, to do wonderful things, basic fun things at home. You know what kids have decided? The best part for kids right now when you ask them is that their parents are at home with them. And as frazzled as mom and dad or mom or dad feels about being home with those kids all day, they love the shit out of this. They've got your undivided attention, and you might as well sit back, get a glass of wine, get you a quarantini. Yep, I said it. Get a quarantini and, uh, or a mimosa. Or if you smoke a little, do what you got to do to calm yourself. And be, and be present for your children and your family and have a fantastic time taking this time off, knowing that, you, you know, we're going to be broke. We are going to be broke. I'm broke. I am broke. But when I wake up tomorrow, I'll have another opportunity to talk to you and to have a good time and to live life like I want to live it on my terms from here on out. This is Karen Duncan, your bucket list buster, and I hope to talk to you guys real soon. Maybe tomorrow, maybe not, maybe later this week. As soon as I've got some information that I think you should know, I'll let you know about it. So I'll talk to you soon. Your bucket list buster signing out for today. Go out there and do something fun. Find one thing today that you want to do that's going to make you smile or make somebody else smile. It's up to you, but smile. Peace. One love.